Hello and welcome back once again to the 22 Zine Awards in which I go through every zine that I acquired in 2023 and grant fabulous awards. If you haven't seen it already, go to the first video for an introduction, explanation, and whatever. Today I'll be going through the second portion of zines that I acquired from Zine Distros. I have a few zines left that I got from Silver Sprocket because I just couldn't fit them all into the last video. The first award is in itself a bit of a fair warning. This is the least safe for work zine. <laughs> so um, I will do my best to make sure that the uh, actual images and pages that I'm showing are at least moderately safe for work, but you know, if you're at work, maybe skip to the next scene. The Least Safe for Work award goes to The Glass Chamber number zero by Tia Roxe. I have had to re-record this section so many times because I am having a hard time finding a way to describe these. <laughs> um, essentially, let's just talk about what it is first. The, the zine is a series of short comics and a few illustrations, and the theme I w overall I would describe as somewhat Kafka-esque, but with heavy sexual themes as well. Uh, the There are a few illustrations that are part of uh, Candy Gore, Candy Guru, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but bright colors, pastel, and very thick blood and fluids. Uh, one of the comics is a uh, sort of transformation sequence, I suppose, of a girl going, uh, transforming into a sort of um, vaguely reptilian like thing, some essentially turning into a lizard girl. Um, one of them is about a girl who uh, I would describe it in kind of a um, telltale heart sense who is being haunted by the decapitated head of someone that she murdered. And the last one is my favorite, but to be honest, I am a little bit embarrassed to talk about it because it is incredibly disturbing, incredibly fetishistic, and um, essentially it plays on a lot of the same themes of the uh sensuality of murder and dismemberment. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> this overlap of the sexual and the grotesque is something that you just, you can never find anywhere else. It really is, it's something, <laughs> it's something special, it's something unique, and it's something that um, is such a zine and small publishing and indie comic experience that I I just love it. <laughs> and I almost hate I, I'm almost, I'm embarrassed to say it, but I do absolutely love this zine. And I I think I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> if this is remotely piquing your interest, I'm sure you will you'll know if you're interested in this sort of thing. So check out The Glass Chamber number zero by Tia Roxe. Okay. The next award is the Freeform Folding Award, and that goes to Fairy Tales for Cynical Girls by K8. This is technically three zines, volumes one, two, and three, but they all go together and I purchased them together and so I'm going to talk about them together. These are little mini zines that are essentially brief retellings of fairy tales. Volume 1 is about The Little Mermaid, Volume 2 is about Sleeping Beauty, and Volume 3 is about Rapunzel. And I I really enjoy these zines. I think that they are are so classic, the sort of punky, riot girl, honest, sarcastic, and just otherwise, you know, really fun and reclaiming these fairy tales. They're they're essentially the sort of thing of if you were a little kid and listening to these fairy tales and just thinking, why didn't they just do this? <laughs> That's what I really love about the uh the the approach to these fairy tales. 
And I decided to award this the Freeform Folding Award because I think part of what makes this such a a fun way, a fun thing to explore is the fact that they are folded. Um, I don't, I don't mean this, but they're they folded badly. They're folded imperfectly. They're, they are pretty janky folds. They, they are mini zines, but they are not very cleanly folded. And I think something about that feels very zine and it feels very appropriate for the, content. It feels very appropriate for what they're talking about. The folds are, you know, laid out in such a way that some of the text gets cut off between pages and um, it doesn't map super cleanly. Like, you can feel the love and energy and passion and, and in a way, the fuck-it-all-ness that went into folding these zines. And... I really love it. I think not only is it inspiring to see that zines are still so, um, they don't have to be so perfect. They don't have to be well cut or well folded or, or anything that just, you know, throwing it down and folding it fast and, you know, getting it out there is the most important thing. I especially want to highlight volume three, which has a special fold, that shows Rapunzel's hair on the side, so it folds outward in an accordion style as opposed to your traditional mini zine style, and I absolutely love that. As you can see as I've folded it out here, you know, they haven't taken, they haven't lined up the edges perfectly to make sure that each page is exactly the same size and exactly the same shape, and I am happy to award this the Freeform Folding Award, and I think it is very inspiring, and I am always happy to go through these. I love zines that remind me that all aspects of zine making, in, in all aspects of zine making, nothing has to be perfect. This next scene, I realize I probably could have put in the very first video about um, getting something direct. I, I wasn't sure what to consider a distro versus not a distro in this case. I got this from a store called House Witch uh, in the Salem area, which has uh, stocks many zines that are done by local zinesters, although that is not their primary focus. They are, you know, a witchy metaphysical store kind of thing. So I don't know if you want to count that as a distro, but whatever. This is the recipient of the Best Activities Award, and this goes to Creative Retreat in Your Pocket by Hills and Holler. This whole zine is basically this thick activity book slash grimoire of different magical activities that are centered around creativity, centered around art, and so essentially they are kind of like art prompts slash journaling prompts that are done with a magical approach, I would put it. There are 31 total, so you could essentially go through and make it a prompt a day monthly challenge if you wanted to do that for yourself. You could just flip a page open randomly and get inspired by it. In addition to the creative activities, you have associated questions and prompts for you to consider, like, uh, do you know whose land you inhabit? What does setting down roots mean to you? Where, does you? where do you feel most rooted? Or have you let loose lately, really let go? And so these are questions that can sort of guide your activity, guide your creation if you want to, or questions that you can, can consider even if you don't decide to actually perform the activity that's suggested, and so that's what I really like about the scene is that it's not the sort of thing that you just pick up when you need to find something to do, it's also something that you can sit with and consider and interact with and still really gain a lot from whether or not you are actually performing the activities suggested. I really appreciate the overall approach to the scene, which I think is summed up very well in the introduction. To create is to love. Go forth. I am very much a proponent of art as magic and 
of sharing in the act of creation and, and reclaiming the act of creation in any way that you like. And I think this is a very wonderful, inspiring way to do that and to do it in a way that feels meaningful and actually brings the magic into art intentionally. The overall writing style as well is very approachable and friendly. For these reasons, I am granting the award of Best Activities to Creative Retreat in Your Pocket by Hills and Holler. Next up, we have a few zines that I got from Microcosm, and this first one is the Whole Ass Book Award, and that goes to Ferns and How to Grow Them by G.A. Wilson. I think it's pretty clear why this one deserves the Whole Ass Book Award. This scene is actually a reprinting of a work by G.A. Wilson from 1905, and it is indeed a whole-ass book. The number of pages, let's see, 136 pages in this, plus the covers of the actual zine, and it goes through a lot of different types of ferns and how to grow them, <laughs> as you might expect from the title. It does have fascinating advice and fascinating information about ferns that I never knew, such as incorporating it into rock work, uh, caring for them inside versus outside, and varieties of ferns that I had never heard of before. But I think what's really interesting about this zine is just the physicality, the fact that it is this giant book that is somehow held together with a mere two staples. I also really like the scene because I feel like it is such a beautiful representation of some of the things that we can do with items that are in the public domain, and that reprinting and bringing these items to light is something we can do to preserve and to share the bulk of knowledge and work that humanity has created over thousands and thousands of years. <laughs> and share them with people and, and revive them from the dead in a way. You could almost certainly find the actual content of this zine on the Internet Archive or a similar online space because it is in the public domain, but I really appreciate Microcosm taking the chance to bring it to, to a, our attention and to, and to bring it back to the printed page. So, for that reason, I am happy to award the Whole Ass Book Award to Ferns and How to Grow Them by G.A. Wilson in 1905 and reprinted by Microcosm Publishing. This next scene is something that is very valuable to me and immediately stood out, as I am a person who, although I am on Instagram and I have slowly started to build a connection with some people on Instagram and I appreciate all the wonderful things that are happening on Zine Instagram, I was a long-time holdout, and I am still very prickly about the idea that the only way to find community and the only way to maintain community is through Instagram or other social media sites. I say Instagram because I feel like that's a particularly strong one in the Zine community and in many places, but anyway, I feel like this Zine is necessary and is is absolutely deserving of the award of most empowering, and that is How to Get Off Social Media and Still Stay in Touch with Your Friends by Sylvia Friday. I think that this zine covers a topic that so many people are trying to do, and so it would be important for so many people where they may recognize how social media is adversely affecting them, but are worried about losing the communities that are strong and the communities that they have found through social media. And this is a difficult balance and a difficult struggle that so many people have interacted with, where they end up stuck within social media because they feel the ability to maintain these social relationships and social connections has been um, stunted in a way that people expect you to be on social media and that's the only way to interact with people. I feel like this zine is empowering if for no other reason than it pre presents you with a viable option. I feel like for many people the concept of deleting social media or going off social media entirely just feels like it's not an option at all because it means giving up 
their entire social life. It means giving up their community and it means giving up and missing out on life as we know it today. And this is such a strong and powerful reminder that you can still maintain a life, you can still maintain friendships, and you can do things in an alternative way if that is what is going to be most supportive for you. And so I really appreciate how this zine makes it feel possible, makes it feel accessible, and shows you the possible beauty that can be found if that is something that is going to be helpful for you. The the line at the end of the introduction that I feel sums it up is, fuck yes, reclaim your time and attention, your mental health is of the utmost importance. And so if social media is adversely affecting your mental health, this provides you with not only a viable option, which you may have always known is in the back of your head, but this really makes it possible and gives you the opportunity and the encouragement to reclaim your life and claim that possibility of living outside of social media and still maintaining social connections. And so for that reason, I am giving the award of most empowering to how to get off social media and still stay in touch with your friends. Next up, we have an oldie but a goodie, another one of those older zines. I think this one is from 2013 that I only discovered very recently, and I am always happy to see those. Isn't it so weird to know that that was 10 years ago now? Anyway, so the award for best collab zine goes to Velo Vixen, a zine about women and bicycling. This is edited by Rachel Krause, but as you should be able to expect. This is a collaborative zine. This zine is so much fun. It is full of, for one, images of women and their bicycles, both modern and vintage images, which is, I feel like the connection is so nice between the the historical liberation that women felt through bicycles and how it's reflected and continued in the modern day. It has bike DIYs and advice for building a cargo trailer. It has maps for the local area and uh, local biking resources for Kansas City where this was written. And it has text and literature essay submissions from various women who ride bikes. You have everything from short stories to interactions had while biking to how they learned to bike or how they really got into using a bike for their main transportation. You have how biking makes them feel and what it allows them to do and just the overall liberation of of emotion and the feeling that it is to ride a bike. And I've decided to award this with best collab because I really think that this wouldn't feel the same if it wasn't a collaboration, if it wasn't a big group of people all sharing their experiences and their love of bikes in different ways, it it wouldn't be the same that every single one of the of the styles, of the voices, of the approaches that are represented here really add to this um, experience of reading this zine, really add to the... It, it, it truly describes an entire biking culture as opposed to a single person who loves and is empowered by their bicycle. And so for that reason, I am granting the best collab award to Velo Vixen. And finally, we have a zine that I got from Wasted Ink Zine Distro, and this is one of my favorite zines of the entire year, and I am so happy to have it. I am very proud to grant the award of Most Beautiful to Ocular Adventures of San Seguaro, num- uh, Volume 2, by uh, Yota Hota Jota. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce it. This is a book of photographs and poetry all about saguaro cacti and crests. It is completely stunning. All of the photographs have so much soul and passion, and to have gone out and discovered all of these cacti with these crests was certainly a major undertaking, because as they point out, the crests are shockingly rare. Uh, The rare crest can be found in an estimated 1 in 200,000 saguaros, which are believed to begin forming between 60 and 80 years old. It is strange and beautiful and alien and 
empowering and inspiring. I absolutely love cacti. I I have a strong love affair with them. I wrote an entire zine this year called Cactus Juice, and I found this zine after that and just was completely in awe by it. It feels like a devotional to the cactus and to specifically the crested saguaro cactus, and I just can't help but go through and look at it and find myself lost and entranced by these swirling, twisting figures on each of these pages. I am so happy that this exists as a documentation, as a as a representation, as just a, a devotional to these cacti. So for all of these reasons and many more, I am happy to award most beautiful zine to The Ocular Adventures of San Seguaro, Volume 2, uh, Crest Consciousness, El Ingenioso Hildago de, de la Mirada. Thanks very much for watching. It's been such a pleasure to see everybody enjoying these zines as much as I have this year, and I hope to see you again uh, tomorrow or the next day for the next video. Bye!